Action Live here at Technicolor Studios downtown Toronto with Peter Vronsky. What inspired you to become a writer? Um, oh, well, you know, as a filmmaker, you have to write your own, own things. So often, you know, you start with the grant application, then the funding application, then the script. So you're constantly writing. It's, it's kind of part of the process. But of course, the final thing that you write is, is transformed in another way. And, and now, essentially, I'm writing to, to write. I'm writing directly to, you know, publishing books. Is it something that you always wanted to do, that you always saw yourself doing? It's the last thing I saw myself doing, because writing is very different from filmmaking. It's a very lonely kind of process. You're, you're by yourself. Um, so it's not something I expected to be doing, but somehow circumstances sometimes work out that way. And uh, you know, I'm, I'm writing mostly right there, but still keeping an eye out on opportunities for, for film and television. Um, and of course, you're kind of paralleling out now as well. It's a whole different world mm -hmm. uh, than it was when I started working in film. Uh, you know, with the internet, with uh, you know, blogging, with social media, streaming. Um, it's all becoming one kind of creative ecology. What's been the most rewarding part of your career so far? I think seeing things. Um, you know, as, as a filmmaker, as a writer, you're in places that normally you don't expect to be. And it's often things that you don't capture on film. It's you know, it's on your way to the airport. It's or when your batteries are being charged that some amazing things happen. What's the most challenging aspect about being a writer and being in the film business? I think the universal answer would be funding. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I've heard that a few times. <laughs> yeah, getting getting you know the resources to be able to do what you want to do in, in the way you think you. Can like it to do so you know even as a writer it's a little bit easier as a writer because it's basically you your publisher and your agent less people involved but even so you know there are word limits there are uh, you know editors that think perhaps they can make your book better sometimes they can <laughs> uh, so you know it's 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 you know as much tug and pull as there might be in the film business but slightly less slightly more focused what projects are you working on right now that you're most excited about? Well, I think my recent book, Ridgeway, uh, The American Fenian Invasion of Canada and the 1866 Battle uh, that, you know, that made Canada. Uh, this is you know, my most recently published book, so I'm in the middle of um, you know, promoting the book. Um, and as well, there's an issue behind it. This is a story of uh, Canadian soldiers that have been forgotten by our government who fought a year before Confederation and Irish invasion of Canada, a battle that we lost and was hidden from the history. Nobody knows about this. And their names are not in our remembrance lists. Their graves that are scattered all over Ontario do not have government support as national war graves. Um, so along with my book right now, I'm pursuing this issue, trying to get the Canadian government to recognize these forgotten soldiers. They are our first modern casualties of modern Canada, 1866. What response have you had to the book so far? Uh, it's been remarkably uh, good, you know, for a Canadian history book. If it, you know, that's a hard sell. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, it's a military story, uh, and it's a great story overall. I mean, you have the story of, of you know, University of Toronto students I mean, being called out into combat. So, so it's, you know, it's, it's a dramatic, interesting story with all sorts of new characters in our history that no one has heard of. How did you do the research for the book? Where were, what were your primary sources? Well, my primary sources were uh, archives in the United States, because the invasion came from the US, and, and of course in, in, in Canada. Um, I was lucky that I did this book on a fellowship uh, from UFT, so I, I went back to UFT to do a PhD. Um, you know, that was one kind of alternative to running around locking on doors for funding, uh, <laughs> you know, to research. Say, it was like a nice, it was like a, Development funding almost that was allowed for five years to research and uh, produce a book length dissertation, which actually became a book. It was published by Penguin Books, so it's, it's, it's a trade book. Um, so I, I had you know unfettered time to research uh, absolutely everything written and published on that Fenian invasion. What advice would you give to someone following in your footsteps? 
I would say uh, finish a degree. <laughs> uh, no matter what, you know, they tell you it doesn't matter, but in, in, in some ways it does, in, in kind of very mysterious ways. Um, so, so um, you know, I was a dropout. I dropped out my second year back in the 1970s to become a filmmaker. And all those years I thought, well, I'll go back, I'll go back. But 25 years went by before I went back. Um, and, and it does open, in strange ways, opportunities for you. And the second thing I would say, you know, certainly if you're a writer, uh, these days an agent um, helps. Although with, uh, you know, the way electronic books are now headed and the way you can publish yourself, it's, it's right now, it's an open frontier. So really, it would be dangerous for me to give any kind of advice. It's open territory. People are going to kind of find their way, I think, in this new world that is coming and publishing. And where can we find out more information on the book specifically? Where is it available? Well, um, the book Ridgeway, uh, The American Fenian Invasion and the 1866 Battle That Made Canada. Um, it's available from Penguin, anywhere books are uh, sold, from uh, Indigo Chapters to Book City in Toronto to Amazon, um, uh, everywhere. Right. Well, thank you so much, Peter, and congratulations on all of your successes so far, and best of luck with your upcoming projects. Thanks for having me. Great, thank you. I'm Katie Ullman, reporting for TTNHD Production Live here at Technicolor Studios in downtown Toronto.